Well, I'm rested from my holiday break, so on today's episode, we're getting back to work and pouring some molds. Hey guys, what's going on? This is Michael here. Uh, so today I'm uh, I'm getting back to work, uh, and um, this video needed to be uh, put together for a little while now. So I uh, I thought I would cut it together now that the holidays are totally done. Uh, so we are going to just be pouring some molds today. So I'm uh, I'm starting to get myself ready. So there's certain things that you're gonna need. So of course the mold, right? But I also use uh, some little plastic cutting boards to uh, to just give myself something stiff underneath the mold. And then you're gonna need this surfactant, uh, which I've got there. Um, you spray that into the mold, uh, and it helps take the bubbles out of the uh, the plaster. And then I also use paper plates to just kind of contain the uh, the plaster as it runs. Uh, so I'll give my mold a little spray here. And um, then I use paint sticks uh, just to shim um, the, uh, the mold um, just to kind of help uh, level everything out. My table is not perfectly level uh, at this point. Uh, but I actually have adjusted it since uh, I recorded this video and it's a lot better. Uh, you're going to need some disposable plastic cups. You're going to need a putty knife. I like a wide one, like a six inch. Some sort of stirrer stick and I use a laboratory grade metal uh, stainless steel stirrer stick for everything that I do and it is worth spending the money to get the thing. And then of course uh, what you see right now, this is the money, that is the plaster. So I use Merlin's Magic, um, which is a dental plaster, um, and it's specifically made for the hobby industry. I know they call it a dental plaster, but that just has to do with how hard it dries. Um, Merlin's Magic, when it sets, it actually sets up about as hard as ceramic. So, you know, you can't really drop the stuff, but it um it sets up much harder than like a regular lightweight hydrocal which is what you typically see in like the train um you know the model train industry so you can see i'm adding the plaster directly into my pre-measured cup of water and in this case we're we're mixing plaster into about three ounces of water and i dump it in and then I pull the stirrer stick out and I see how much is on the stirrer stick. So that's way too thin. So you see I'm making another addition of dry plaster into it. And you can kind of tell how much you have in there based off of how much is floating on the surface. Um, so now I'm checking the stirrer and um, it, uh, it still seems a little thin. So I'm making another addition here. And if you look at the cup right now, now that plaster is almost just wanting to sit on the surface because there's enough dissolved into that liquid. Um, so the stir stick, uh, now when I pull it up, it's coating the stick. It's not just instantly running off the stick. Um, so we know that we're getting a lot closer to where we want to be. And I do these small additions um, most of the time, but not always. Like sometimes I'll add a little more in to start with. Um, you just have to get a feel for it. Um, and this is looking a lot better. This, uh, that's really where we want it. So when you pour your mold, um, you just want to just overfill it uh, a little bit. Don't underfill it because some of the water uh, that you've mixed in here is going to rise to the surface as your plaster sets. So if, you, if you're filling your mold perfectly level, you are going to get an underfilled mold when it's all said and done. So I have a little extra plaster, so we're going to do a second mold here. So um, I have this one, which uh, is for curved dungeon walls, and uh, if you haven't seen this mold, um, it's one that I uh, did up recently. Uh, so I had master uh, parts um, from her starts, but I needed to make a lot of those parts, uh, not just a couple of them, and um, the 
the mold that it was originally from only made about two of these parts per casting. So I made a lot of the parts and then cast my own mold, which allows me to knock out um, quite a few. Now, when you do this, you know, of course you can't sell these molds because the master belongs to somebody and you also um, want to make sure that you have bought his molds because it's only fair that he gets paid for the work that he did. Um, you know, he created the master. Now over on the left, uh, you see the, uh, the first mold that I poured, I set that on the vibrating table. So that is just to help the plaster settle into all the little nooks and crannies of the mold and get some of the air bubbles out. And now we've went ahead and we've gone and poured uh, the same way our curved wall piece mold. And you can see it is slightly over full. Um, and that is just so that when the water separates, we don't wind up with an underfilled mold. Uh, so we'll set the uh, surfactant um, aside and give the, uh, the curved wall piece mold a, uh, a little bit of a vibration. Um, and just make sure that you keep all of these pieces shimmed. Uh, because if they are not shimmed, um, then your plaster is going to basically run out one side of your mold. So once uh, we, uh, we have a little bit of vibration on these molds, then we set them aside uh, basically for a five minute uh, dry. Um, and then we'll scrape these molds. And by scrape, I mean we're going to get all the excess plaster and mainly the water that's on the top of these molds because that water is going to rise to the top um, off of them. So we'll give them a sec, uh, let them uh, let them dry, and uh, and then we'll be back uh, to scrape them here in just a minute. All right, guys, we are back with uh, just a few seconds left to go on uh, these molds, and we're getting ready to scrape them. Uh, so we're going to use our putty knife for this, and I give it five minutes just because that seems the magic number for me uh, that I can scrape this plaster without uh, really affecting anything. So you can see how I'm uh, I'm vibrating the uh, the knife. I'm kind of swooshing it left to right as I drag it, and I'm also dragging it at a slight 45 degree angle. That's really what we want to do when we scrape these molds. Um, if you don't jiggle the knife left to right, you will drag the plaster out of the inside of your mold as you do it. Uh, so of course. On a wider mold, you have more pieces that you need to pay attention to, but the principle is still the same versus my little mold. Um, so I'm just uh, I'm just trying to keep the blade of the knife um, uh, moving left to right as I drag it, um, and uh, you can see I do some passes at the uh, at the 45. Now if you find that any of your pieces kind of recess a little bit, you can take a little bit of the plaster that's accumulated on the underside of your blade and you can just tap the knife to fill them back up. Um, and the goal is to get these basically flush to the surface at this point. Remember that you've pretty much just scraped off anything that was going to be water and liquid in these molds uh, by running your putty knife over them. Uh, so once you're happy um, with, uh, with everything that you see and you've made that final pass uh, over them just to make sure that everything's perfect, then you have to just set them aside uh, to dry. And dry time is really going to depend on the mold, but in my case it's about 30 to 35 minutes. Um, in uh, in my basement, um, that's a pretty typical time. 
but the deeper the mold, the longer that you really want to give it to set up. I have one mold where I pour sewer tiles, and on that one, I pretty much give it an hour, uh, just so that that, um, that piece is, uh, is really dry and really set up. So through the magic of, uh, of TV, we are now dry. You saw my little flash, that was my cut to 30 minutes later. And here come the pieces. So when you pull out of a mold, uh, you may remember my other video, um, you want to stretch the mold a little bit uh, as you're pulling out the parts. Um, that'll help it release. And your debubbleizer, which we sprayed uh, in the surfactant, that helps it release a little bit as well. Um, these little ones, the curved pieces, are fairly easy to do, um, but a deeper mold, that, uh, that takes a little more coaching uh, to not break the piece. So you can see here, I'm going to stretch around each of these, uh, these little pieces and then I'm going to push them up from underneath as I go to pull them. Um, by pushing them from the bottom, you give yourself a little bit to grab a hold of on the surface and you take more of the stress off of it. Um, so these are my uh, inch and a half high, um, half inch by half inch by half inch posts, um, which basically are what I use um, when I'm doing door frames. And that was a perfect casting and a perfect pull. Um, they, uh, they all turned out uh, exactly the way that I wanted them to. Uh, and I basically created these pieces out of the half inch by half inch by half inch little teeny tiny blocks and I stacked them, glued them up, and then made a mold of them glued up so that I could, uh, could make this stack, this size, repeatedly um, with consistency and not have to uh, spend so much time casting these little blocks and gluing them up when I knew that I was going to basically be using them and kneading them like this. made a lot more sense for my application. So uh, I'm pretty happy with them. Um, it's a great little mold uh, and I, uh, I think that it, uh, it does its job really well. And then my curved pieces, um, they're, uh, they're working out great. So here's where we're going to cut it, guys. Make sure to leave me comments if you got any questions. Remember, if you like our video, give us a thumbs up and subscribe so you can see more great videos like this.